Welcome to the Northboro Select Board meeting of July 31st, 2023. The time is 7 10 p.m. and I will call our meeting to order and I will read some opening remarks. This open meeting of the Northboro Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. All members of the Northboro Select Board are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The Act allows the Northboro Select Board to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of the meeting may do so by going to Northboro Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link on the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This is not a regular uh, select board meeting, so we don't have a public input agenda item. But if you have uh, questions or comment on agendas as we agenda items as we go through them, please raise your virtual hand and I will be happy to recognize you. And now going around the virtual room again, my name is Mitch Cohen in the order on I see on my screen, Laura Zeiten. <clears throat> Leanne Hirsch. Here. Kristen Wickstead. Here. Lisa Maselli. Here. We also have with us Interim Town Administrator Bob Reed. Present. And Assistant Town Administrator Becca Meekins. Present. And we also have a couple of fine folks from North Rural Cable helping to deal with uh, the technology end of our meeting. Uh, first item on our agenda says Kristen Black Health Director report on the placement of Haitian refugees in North Bro. Um, we did invite Kristen, but she is very, very busy dealing with, as it says on the agenda, the placement of Haitian refugees in North Bro. So uh, we gave her the, the night off from, uh, from, from dealing with us, but I am going to read something that she put together and then we'll open it up to discussion. Um, let's see. All right. So bear with me as I read through this statement, which is about two pages long. Uh, last week, the town was notified by the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities that approximately 100 new arrivals, consisting of 30 families with a total of 40 children from South America and the Caribbean, would be housed in a new temporary shelter located in town. The town has been coordinating efforts to support and provide resources to these families for an, on an ongoing basis, partnering with state agencies, representatives, nonprofit, volunteer, and faith-based organizations throughout the area. The town's focus over the last week was to ensure basic food, housing, and medical needs were met. The health department established a target sign-up and, and donations from the community of diapers, formula, personal care products, clothing, toys, and other items. We are very grateful to the response from the community. We, we received a $1,000 donation from Wegmans, a donation of over 20 backpacks from St. Cobain, donations of diapers, food, personal care products, and $500 in laundry coins from the Northboro Food Pantry. We also received substantial financial assistance from the Worcester Community Action Council with the help of Senator Robin Kennedy. Thank you, Robin. We are also grateful to the community members who were called up and stepped up uh, to assist with food service and other needs. We are especially grateful to locals who have stepped up to help with translation. At this time, there is no certainty to the length of, length of stay. Prepared meals are being provided by a local organization with a contract with the state to support food costs. We are meeting with a service provider to discuss other eligible costs this week, and we anticipate that all food, transportation, staff, and other eligible supply costs will be covered by the state. We will be establishing a system for collecting clothing and possibly financial donations to support families. Don't have that up yet, hopefully soon. Meetings are scheduled this week, but at this time, all basic needs are being met. An outstanding need is on-site interpreter services available throughout the day and, and early evening dinner time for Haitian Creole and Spanish speakers. If you can provide one of these services during this time, please re reach out to me, me meaning not Kristen, but me being Mitch directly. You can go to the town's website, uh, go to select board and click on Mitch Cohen um, for the link as I'm the volunteer coordinator. 
There has been an outpouring of support and offerings to help and provide resources from the community. This speaks volumes about how welcoming and generous North Grove is. However, because we do not know how long these arrivals will stay, understanding that they could be relocated at any time by, the, by state agencies, we want to be thoughtful about the tools and resources provided. In order to ensure that the resources offered address the most critical needs, we are asking that all residents seeking to provide assistance volunteering do so by through the central communications with Mitch Cohen, chair of the board, and volunteer coordinator, that's me. Again, go to the town website, go to select board and click on my name for my email address. The town will continue to provide relevant updates to the community and is currently working closely with area organizations to set up a means to donate cash and other items to the families. Once we have an established channel for donations, we will notify the public. We kindly request that residents do not show up on site to the shelter location with donations or seeking to provide assistance. This is a safety concern and can cause confusion for staff on site. Thank you, uh, all of you, for your assistance and patience while we work out to how, to how to best support the new arrivals and make them feel as welcome as possible during the stay here in Northboro. Um, I want to add a couple of other things. I spoke with uh, State Senator Robin Kennedy today. I guess, no, this is from, from me, not from Kristen. Um, uh, she let me know that the new state budget, which is on the brink of being passed and approved by the governor, contains a new light, line item, which has a million dollars for refugee housing. And uh, there's a good chance we'll be able to take advantage of some of that for uh, for what we're dealing with here. And I want to thank her and um, uh, also representatives Kate Donahue and Meg Kilcoyne, who have been incredibly helpful in navigating the relevant state agencies and advocating for the town's needs. Um, there are so many incredible volunteers that have helped over the past week. I'm not even going to try to name any of them. Um, as when we come up for air, we will uh, find some way to thank uh, all the volunteers that have helped those thus far and will certainly be helping going forward. Um, with that, I'm happy to um, open it up to the board and see uh, see what questions and statements anybody would like to make. Um, some questions people here will be able to answer, many we will not, um, but I know um, we'll be taking notes and be able to get answers to people when uh, when the right answers are available. Member of the board, any, any questions or comments? Kristen? So the first part of that statement where you said um, email you, Mitch Cohen, yes. um, can you repeat that? Sure. So um, so in a meeting earlier today, I was asked by Kristen to be the volunteer coordinator for this incident, as it's being called. And um, uh, my email address is mcohen at town.northborough with the U-G-H dot M-A dot U-S, or you could go to the town website and go underneath, uh, I think it's boards and committees to select board. My name will be listed along all along with the other select board members, and you can click on my name, which will start a new email address, a new email to me. Okay, so that's just if anyone wants to volunteer for anything. Correct. Okay, and um, as far as, so I did send you and Kristen an email earl earlier today and Bob was CC'd. Becca, oh, sorry, I left you off because I forgot you were coming back from vacation. But um, so should those people reach out to you again? Or are you considering them already on your list? That you're if, so, if I'm aware, yeah, if, if somebody has already volunteered and has been on site over the last week, most of those names I know, any others, um, Krista Black well, will know. Um, people that, I, that, I, that reached out to me and then I forwarded their information to you. I and saw, I, I did see that. You know, yeah, you don't, you, they, don't, they don't need to do that all over again. Okay. Uh, there's a second step to this that as we're sort of formalizing the role that we should take, we want to make sure that all the volunteers that are going on site are Corey checked. Yeah. So, um, so what, what will happen is um, when the names come in, I will email a Corey form to them, or Becca might email that form that will go directly to Becca. That doesn't need to go to me. She'll process the Corey paperwork and um, and get people validated. And I believe the police department will be printing out um, lanyards or badges 
for um, for all the volunteers so we can have everyone properly identified when they go to the site. Great. Yeah, that's, I think I was thinking about that. I think the Cori check is a really important step. Okay, thank you. I just um, wanted to add that um, I volunteered several times last week and um, attended one of the more stressful meetings where it was 2.30 in the afternoon and um, Northborough still didn't know how we were going to get those people dinner that night, um, just a couple hours later. So I think, I hope everybody realizes why it's been kind of, it seems chaotic because it, it has been fairly chaotic, but um, I think everyone pulled everything together really well. And um, it is it is a really lovely group of people who seem really grateful and they seem generally um, pretty relieved not to be in a dangerous situation anymore, not to be in whatever other trying situations they've been in before. And some of them I noticed last night just really, really appreciated a little half hour time to themselves to just take a deep breath and kind of sit at the edge of things while we played with their children and gave their children a really good time. And I think that is a, um, that's something that I remember now a long time ago as a mom feeling like, oh, thank you for giving me a break. So um, anyway, I just wanted to add that. It was a really um, good evening yesterday. I'll, I'll add to that that I've been there for um, many meetings and meals over the past week. Such a great group of people. Uh, you know, they've, they've been through a lot to get here. Um, most, if not all of them, arrived in the United States within days prior to coming to Northboro. I don't know their specific journeys, um, but I suspect they had compl a complicated process to get here, but they're, they're here and they are they're happy. They're great. They're all young families. There are a lot of little kids um, who are really happy little kids, and it's great to see them. Um, we discovered on Saturday that it was the second birthday of a little girl, and a few of us came together and got in total three birthday cakes um, through a little comedy of errors, but it worked out fine because we needed three birthday cakes, and these are large sheet cakes, and uh, everyone everyone enjoyed singing happy birthday and uh and just having a reason to celebrate um it was it was a lot of fun yeah i think one other thing that's important for people to realize too is that these people didn't necessarily know each other before and they they didn't necessarily travel together to get here i think a lot of them are getting to know each other now i, I don't know if people realize that anyway okay thanks uh, Lisa. Um, I too went for, I think, a lunch and a dinner and, um, and, and spent some time with a lot of the little ones. I think uh, Kristen told me I had two babies for my lips. So that was pretty, uh, pretty well balanced until I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> Quit these babies. But um, so the, I get, and I, I did see Laura when I was leaving, she was coming. Is there, are we as the board members also gonna go and get a quarry check? Cause we've been there already. What do we do about that? Have you already taken your two? You and you and Kristen? So th this decision was made this morning. I haven't been to the site since. That's a good question. I guess, Becca, I assume that the board members need to be quarry checked just like everybody else. Yeah, I'll follow up with the board tomorrow morning with some paperwork. Thank Great, you. thanks. Julianne. Well, thank you to all of you and, and all of the people out there who have been helping with this, this incident, right? That's what we're calling it. Um, so what is the town responsible for, you know, the next steps, the short and long-term goals, or is there a state agency that's going to come in and help us with that? That's a very good question. Um, we hope a state agency or some, some, nonprofit will be able to take this over if this continues for a while. Um, the state is kind of overwhelmed right now with those coming into the country in this process. We are a, um, a right to shelter state, which means that the state has a legal obligation 
to provide shelter to families. A family is um, anyone 21, I think under 21 and their immediate family and or anyone who is pregnant and their immediate family. So when they come into the state and they don't have a place to live, the state has a legal obligation to provide shelter. So they had that need and Northboro is not the only community that over the last couple of weeks have received an influx of new visitors. Um, and uh, so they sent them to the Econo Lodge and let us know they were there. And that was about the end of the state's process at the very beginning, which was a little stressful because the way we understood it, the state was taking care of them. It turns out they were not. We had a, a day of some tense meetings. Uh, Kristen alluded to one of them. and um, But we found them food. We wanted to take good care of them. Uh, and then some more came in. So that's how we got up to the 30 families that are there now. Um, we don't know how long they will be there. Uh, they have, The state has told us either August 5th or August 10th, depending upon who you ask. Um, there is some talk of that being extended at least a few more weeks. We really don't know for sure because obviously they need to have another place to go if they're going to leave Northborough. So um, as this is a, you know, cer certainly it's currently a drain on staff from doing their regular day-to-day -day work. Um, we hope that the state will be able to, to come in and probably not themselves because they don't have the personnel for it, but there are a number of uh, nonprofit agencies that help individuals in cases like this and hopefully contract with one of them to provide um, the mainstay of the day-to-day -day help that they need, getting, getting food and clothing and everything like that. And you know, certainly the town will... Um, we'll step in to, to help any way that's necessary. Does so that answer your question? Schools, uh, is there a possibility that um, some or all of the children will be enrolled in, in Northboro public schools? Yes. Yeah, and so if, if, they're, if they are here, then they will have a right to go to school here. Um, I mean, many of the little kids are, are too young um, you know, there are, there are, there are babies and toddlers and things like that, but school age kids, um, I don't know the number of school age kids off the top of my head, but that has been identified. Uh, every family has been, uh, interviewed by health department staff and all of those details written down. Um, the school is aware of the situation, you know, right now, if it's August 5th or 10th, they, you know, the school year will not have started, but if they are here until the end of August into September, then, yeah, um, you know they they have a right to school, and and the school department will will have to figure that out. Um, I know the health department is already working on making sure the kids are vaccinated and everything else to get them ready for school wherever their school might be. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other comments or questions from the board? Um, Bob or Becca, anything you wanted to add? No. Okay. Um, I don't see any hands up in the audience, but if anyone does want to ask any questions, hey, I'm starting to see a hand up. I will say before um, uh, before bringing in the public, there are important and valid questions about um, legal status and how people got here and other political questions. There's no one at this meeting that can help with those. So if your questions or concerns are on those levels, um, you know, kind of a waste of time. But um, but if your questions or comments are about, you know, how the town is caring for these individuals, we'd love to hear it. Uh, first up, we have uh, Fran Backstrand. Fran, if you could unmute, identify yourself, and let us know what's on your mind. Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Fran Backstrand, 76 Cedar Hill Road. I just wanted to commend those of you who have actually been to the site already today. I had the privilege of working all day today at a different location where there were 25 um, uh, recently uh, arrived immigrants um, in the, to the Framingham area. And now that what I was helping them with was actually the paperwork so that they could get health benefits because, because the travel has been trying and some of the people are in need of more urgent, not urgent, but medical attention. And so helping them with the applications for mass health programs, as well as the SNAP benefits. Um, it is challenging because I speak 
mass health, but I don't speak Portuguese, Spanish, or French Creole, which is the majority of the um, languages that were spoken. But it is, um, I mean, I actually was happy to see that Northborough was one of the communities because the generosity that has been shown in the past, even when we had um, people at the Red Roof Inn, I think in Southborough, there was a collaborated effort. Um, there should be legal services here at Central Mass, working with them on their immigration status, as well as someone similar to what I'm doing part-time in Framingham to help them with that paperwork. So um, I was gonna reach out to Kristen, but I will certainly send you an email, Rich, so that if there's a need for that, I'm happy to help. Great, Fran, thank you very much. I, I know that is an identified need um, and that is underway, but I, because I'm just, uh, just a volunteer, there are experts working on those things. So that might be fully underway, um, but I don't, I don't know the, the exact status of it. Thank you, Fran. Not, not a problem, thank you. Next up, we have Erica Zeiger. Erica, if you could unmute, identify yourself and let us know what's on your mind. Hi, this is Erica Zeiger to Stratton Way. Um, just a couple things, and I think you may have mentioned it earlier. Um, I stopped by today with donations, and it was really nice to see. There was a lot of donations. The families seemed to be getting to know each other. There were some moms that were, you know, cleaning. They must have just had lunch. They were cleaning up the tables, and they were, you know, the little kids were outside. The tent, the tent was clearly visible. So when the kids played, it was um, it was okay. I did have a question, and you may not know, and I know you mentioned vaccines, but when they enter like an immigration facility, are they medically cleared? Like, I I don't I, I might know the end of the answer to that, but not well enough to um, to answer the question definitively. So I, it's a, it's above the pay grade of everyone in this meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, Mitch, I'm going to send you an email because right. I have a large network and they may have, um, they may speak Haitian, Creole, Spanish. Oh. So um, let me check. Let me, I'll, I'm going to double check with you and then I'll reach out to them. But um, in the meantime, I am happy to just, you know, if there's any donations that need to be driven there or anything like that. Um, I'm happy to be a service and I appreciate everybody's help. Years ago, I worked a NEO operation. Um, we had, they were Americans. We had a large number of Americans coming in from Lebanon and it was a 24 hour operation. So greatly appreciate it. Rich. Eric. Yeah, Bob. I think we should mention the donation part that we're working on but i don't think people should be driving there with or without donations i mean i think we explain the issues here um so i think it needs to be clear that people need to be cleared before they go to the site yeah um you know during yeah. the first few days um you know we were figuring things out as as we develop the formality of it um you know eric as as i know you heard earlier the primary means of, of the public helping right now is to buy things from that uh, yes. registry from Target uh, and bring them to the police station. And um, and then they will be brought from the police station as items are needed over to the site. And going forward, no one who isn't sort of scheduled to volunteer and already cleared to volunteer should be going to the site. But we we don't critique. We absolutely help. You know, we're, no. we're very happy to everyone who has helped thus far. Really, you are. know, that's very good information because I wasn't sure where to drop it off, and it, I was like going right by there, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, I'm just gonna do it." Yep. So I appreciate the info, and I'll make sure that I share that with other people too if they ask. Great. Thank you very much, Erica. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I'll also add that I was asked to name a uh, donations coordinator, and Liz Nolan has uh, has volunteered to step into that role. For those who know her, know that's a, a natural fit, um, and so she's going to be helping um, with the getting the getting the materials over from the police station over to the site, and as we expand, seeking for other uh, material donations, uh, she'll be helping to coordinate that. Um, I don't see any other hands up 
in the audience for this item. Uh, does anyone else from the board or in the meeting? Uh, Lisa. I uh, just a quick question on the volunteers and the staff. Do uh, I would imagine that that most of the staff is there during the meal times, lunch and dinner, and mm -hmm. that um, and I'm sure that there are a lot of volunteers who would who would like to you know go and help and alleviate some of that because the staff's got to do their regular duties and then they've got to try to do this. So I think, um, and I'm assuming that's what people want. We don't want to just have the staff working Monday through Friday on those on those meals because it's really, it's a lot. I mean, it's at, for, I don't yeah. know how. So we're, we're in pretty good shape for the basic needs uh, Monday through Friday for lunch and dinner. Um, between staff and some already identified volunteers. Um, this past weekend, as I suspect next weekend's will be, um, are primarily volunteers that the, that the staff need a break because that's it's really hard work throughout the week. And um, so it'll be primarily volunteers on the weekends. As the volunteers are further identified and qualified and figure out translation especially, um, you know, for folks that are available during the week, some may be asked to come in during the week as well. Um, I suspect translators would be welcome uh, just about any time. Okay. And then did they find some some means of transportation for the for the um, people to get into Worcester to get their their shots and all that? That'll get figured out. I mean, the shots might be done on site. I you know, I don't know. that's that's up to the health department to to figure that out. Um, I don't know if they would need to be transported just for that. Uh, there have been some transportation for medical needs to a couple of the area hospitals. Um, you know, these folks had had a, had a journey and uh, and and unsurprisingly have are in need of some medical attention. A number of them are pregnant, which is wonderful, and uh, so they need some medical attention for that on occasion. Um, and uh, but but there's been a lot of discussion about transportation just for just to get off the site. Um, you know, this particular, you know, where, where this is, is right at the intersection of two busy state roads. There's not, there's not a lot of beauty right there. There's not really a lot to walk to or do. So, um, you know, hopefully in the near future, we'll identify a means of transportation and all of the other logistics that have to go along with that. So, uh, so maybe um, they can see some of the other great things in North Borough in, in the area. Well, Father Father Juan had uh, come on Sunday with uh, two or three other um, people from St. Rose of Lima's church. And um, he was talking about getting a bus together so that maybe he could, uh, or the St. Rose of Lima would provide the, the transportation to maybe bring them up to Tuga's farm so they could go and enjoy the farm and that sort of thing. He's away this week, but I believe he's, you know, planning on putting something together when he gets back. And that um, um, I gave his information to Mary Ellen, um, so they're they're working that out. I believe. Yeah, yeah. There have been a number of people who've who've either offered to donate or suggested um, trips like that to the area, and um, I I don't think the site is ready for that yet, but soon. I, I hope we'll be able to take advantage of that soon, Kristen. I just wanted to add the Northborough Police Department has also been really, really great about helping like they obviously offered to take in the the donations and transport those so that was nice but they also like Chief Liver and Lieutenant Griffin came the first day that I was there and they stood there in their uniforms, you know, and they couldn't talk to these people and um, uh, one of the volunteers who speaks Creole was interpreting for a big group of families and the two police officers. And he basically said, because he lives in town, and he basically said, these police officers are your friends. They are here for you. They just asked me to tell you if you need anything. You know, if if you call 911, it's these guys. It's their people who work with them. And um, so... And the police have also been the ones dropping off the the um, the donations, and they also offered to drive people home from the hospital if someone gets delivered to the hospital by ambulance. So, like, there's a very good um, a very good community vibe going through the police too, which I really appreciate. Yeah, as I said, all all the town staff involved have been 
have been amazing and and reacted um, a week ago, you know, a week and a day ago, we we had no idea that this was coming. And we had to become experts in this very, very quickly. And I, I say we as in everybody else but me, because I'm just a volunteer coordinator. And I can serve. And, um, I believe Kristen did say, if I come to your meeting Monday, don't thank me. I don't want to hear it. I will leave the meeting because <laughs> she's like, I'm just trying to do my job. So yeah, they are all working really hard. Yeah. Um, there is one item of business related to this is that because we have um, received, uh, as I mentioned, the thousand dollars from Wegmans, um, a substantial amount of money from an organization in Worcester, we need to uh, have a vote to sort of accept that money. Um, it, again, we're not accepting donations from the public through this yet. We may at some point in the near future, or we may direct people to um, to nonprofits in the area. I, I imagine later this week, we'll put an announcement about that. But um, I would entertain um, a motion about accepting gifts for this. Uh, am I muted? You're not muted. I am not muted. Okay, just double checking because I had okay. covered up the Zoom screen. I okay. move that the town accept gift funds, grant fund and funds, and tangible property related to new arrivals being placed in the town of Northborough by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A and Section 53A and a half. Yes and authorize expenditure by the Northborough Health Department of such funds and util utilization and disposition of any such tangible property. Second. Motion's been made by Kristen, seconded by Julianne. Um, and again, what this does is normally, if somebody provides a gift to the town, the select board need to, needs to individually authorize each gift. This set, sets up a process that if, if money comes in or property comes in for this purpose, that's already set up um, and we don't need to vote on each individual item. Um, any other discussion on that motion? Um, all those in favor, Laura. Aye. Julianne. Aye. Kristen. Aye. Lisa. Aye. I also vote aye. Vote is unanimous in favor. So that account is set up. Um, I can't think of anything else on this item to discuss. Bob or Becca, am I missing anything? No, I think we're all set. Great. All right. Um, thank you very much. And since no one has thanked Kristen, thank you, Kristen Black. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't, I can't say enough good things, but I'll, I'll stop there. Um, uh, next on our agenda, we have uh, interim town administrator Doration. So um, as we know, and we'll uh, mention briefly again in the, um, the next agenda item, uh, we will need interim town administrator services a little bit longer than initially forecasted. Um, uh, Bob has, has told us that uh, he's willing to stay on at least a little bit longer, but, uh, but we, should, we should look for something um, when, he's, when he's done, when he wants to go do some other things. Um, so he has suggested that uh, as of, is it the 14th of August, yes. yep. that uh, that we allow him to reduce his days in the office from three days down to two days. And he is, he is confident that, uh, that he'll still be able to continue pr to provide the leadership that we need. And I, I agree with him. You'll get the same amount of work for two days instead of uh, three. I'm a great negotiator. <laughs> I was going to let you say it. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, as the board knows, um, Bob has Bob is available all the time and uh, and has put in far more than three days of work per week. Um, and he's. Yeah, so I, I, I think this is this is great for the town and, and fair to Bob. There are no other questions I'll entertain. Oh, oh sorry, Julianne. So in case of an emergency, um, then Becca steps in or? Well, I don't think things will change. I mean, I'll still be available. Uh, you know, you could, as you know, get in touch with me, email or phone my days off. But um, yeah, I mean, Becca's perfectly capable of handling anything that comes up. Okay. And and do you know, I, will that be a week by week thing that you decide what two days or? 
at this point it is. I guess it depends on how the uh, recruitment process continues. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the interim town administrator to reduce his days of work from three days per week to two days per week, effective August 14th, 2023. Second. Motion made by Julianne, seconded by Kristen. Any discussion? All those in favor, Julianne. Aye. Kristen. Aye. Lisa. Aye. Laura. Aye. I also vote aye. Vote is unanimous in favor. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, next up, we have town administrator search update. Um, as I think everybody knows by now, um, the candidate that we were in the process of negotiating with to take over the permanent job of town administrator uh, withdrew from consideration at the end of last week. Um, so um, we can continue. Um, we've worked things out with MRI, the search firm that we used for the first phase to continue um, leading the search through a second phase, and we can begin that immediately, or we can we can wait a little while, and uh, they will not be charging us anything additional um, other than the advertising costs, which is um, not a lot of money. Um, the advantage of that is they've already interviewed so many people in town, have a very thorough community profile. Um, they know the screening committee. Um, they know the, they know the town. Um, and by waiting a little while, I think, you know, the sort of the pool refreshes a little bit. Um, and um, so I just want to make sure everyone everyone is OK with that. The alternative is we would have to hire another firm, um, you know, expend that money and, and start that process anew. But uh, we can we can take it either way. Any questions or comments? Kristen. Um, I, I thought uh, we were going to have to create a new screening committee. We, we could. Um, or yeah. we could ask those people, will you do it again? Correct. Yeah, I, um, I've heard from a couple of the members of that screening committee, but we haven't had any, any discussions about formally reconstituting, I think. Um, you know, the, the most important thing for us to decide is when. That if we're going to continue with MRI, we could decide to immediately advertise, or we could say, yeah, let's wait until September or so, until the end of the summer, advertise then. Um, and then we can figure out at that time exactly what we want to do about the screening committee. Um, I will say um, it was a really good committee to work with. So at least from my perspective, I have no hesitation of working with the same group again, if they are willing. And I don't know for a fact that everyone is willing or available. Any other questions or comments? Julianne? I think it makes perfect sense to um, continue with MRI, um, but I, I wonder if, um, if we can expand our advertising budget and catchment area. Is I think I think it's worthwhile to ask. I, I don't remember where they advertised last time. I mean the um, the folks that apply for this type of job are not the type that seek ads on on Monster.com and Indeed and things like that. There are a small number of industry trade journals that uh, that town's administrator um, pay attention to for job listings. So I I don't know, but. Um, but Bob, I think you know I, I, it makes sense for for you if you're willing to talk to them, find out where they've advertised, and suggest anything additional. Yeah, I did speak with Alan Gould today, and um, for some reason uh, along the line, I thought I had heard that they hadn't advertised in the Mass Municipal Association, but Alan confirmed that they had, and also they seem to be pretty thorough advertising with the state associations across New England. Um, if you need a comprehensive list, I would be easy to get from Alan, but I think that they, it sounded like they were advertising, I mean, not nationwide, but uh, certainly across New England. And they have, they have connections all over New England. They do recruiting all over New England. I would like that list. And um, does it make sense to, to, you know, to include a part of New York state? I mean, that's. Um, I but guess I could ask Alan that question. You know what? But, that might be wrong because they might not have 
um, municipal government set up the way New England states do, right? Well, I, I, I don't want to speak for them. I don't want to speak for Alan, but I think if they thought it was productive, they would have done it. But I can, I can double check with Alan. Okay. I'd like a copy of that list too, if you don't mind. It makes sense to just send out to the whole board. And then if any individual members have suggestions on other ways of advertising, you know, send that back through Bob to MRI. So I think I'm hearing consensus from the board about continuing with MRI. Any objections to that? Um, timing. Um, again, we could we could advertise right away. Um, my thinking uh, is to probably wait until the beginning of September, get us out of the summer season when maybe people are thinking more more about jobs and less about summer vacations. How long do we have uh, our our illustrious uh, town administrator right now? Is it going to be September, October? How about December? We have a great Christmas party. I know you like to. <laughs> I'll come back for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will. I will say so. Two. So two things. Um, our charter limits the duration of an of a single interim to six months. Right. Um, you know, I imagine if we needed to keep an interim, and I'm not you know, whether it be Bob or anybody else longer, we could probably figure out some way to do that. Uh, and working through council, maybe name somebody else and then bring the person back in. I don't, I don't know. I hope we don't have to go down that road too much. Um, and the other aspect is that uh, that MRI can and, and is expected to um, uh, start looking for a new interim on the anticipation that um, that Bob may want to or lead or need to, um, to, to depart from us before we have a new permanent town administrator in place. I can, I will mention that also when I speak to MRI tomorrow, um, how that's coming along. Um, and also, interestingly enough, I was contacted by a former town manager today about interest in the interim position. So I'll, I'll forward that person's name to MRI as well. Great makes sense to to take a little breather especially since august you know families are on vacation or getting children ready for school so um maybe you know really getting going the beginning the very beginning of september also in terms of the screening slash slash search committee they you know they probably have summer plans also and that might be easier for them so i'm okay with waiting waiting several weeks yeah i definitely agree with both of you on on holding off just you know for the reasons you stated already so are we talking about uh, picking this back up say right after labor day mm -hmm. that makes sense okay what do uh, you think about um i really don't know i uh, you know, Mitch had mentioned waiting for a while, and I thought that made sense to, um, I think, as Mitch put it, have the candidate pool refresh. Um, I did mention that to Alan today when I spoke with him, and he talked about the merits of just going ahead now. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I guess uh, waiting a month is, um, and you know, till the summer season is over, I don't think is going to be that much of an issue. Can you remind me again, how long do they have the posting out? Is it two weeks? Is it a month when they put that original, when MRI will put out the search, like the job the job posting? Mm, I don't remember how long it was. I don't remember. Vaguely, I think it was three or four weeks. Okay. Uh, but the vast majority of responses come in just before the deadline. So if we are going to postpone it, my my gut would be let's make sure everything's lined up to get that out right on the day after Labor Day when everybody gets back in. So we'll maximize that time. Um, just, you know, I don't want to wait to to reconvene in September and then cause more delays that are going to bring us into the holiday season. So whatever the timeline is going to look like, that's, you know, where my thought is. But doing any heavy work right now, I think while everybody is still on like heavy vacation mode would be challenging. Yeah. Um, yeah, what we can do is work with MRI and develop a schedule going forward. Um, if 
if folks are folks on this board are willing to use the same screening committee and if the members of the screening committee are willing to continue um, we can even start to schedule those meetings based on an expected response date so we can have everything locked in and um, and, and go forward it will also be a, a somewhat quicker process in all likelihood you know we won't radically change the process the process at the screening committee level we had a bunch of essay questions we developed I can't imagine we're going to change those too much and we can we can prepare that ahead of time if we need to and then if there are any changes to like if, if there are any changes that people would like to make on the screening committee search committee well though that start is somebody going to reach out to the to the people that had served on that committee already just to validate or verify that they still want to participate? I, yeah, I mean, as as the chair of that committee, oh, I yeah. can, as long as long as the folks on the select board are OK with me doing that and want to continue to use the same screening committee, an alternative is we could re-advertise, um, <clears throat> figure out if we want any different structure to it. Um, I, I, that would be some additional work and some additional time and might extend the process a little bit. Um, again, there's, there's a real advantage of having people that have been through it once before. And I can say from being in the room was a really good group. Um, I was just thinking if uh, any of our fellow select board members wanted to be on the screening committee this time and had you know, said they didn't want to last time and change their minds, they should have the opportunity to do that if they want. But they don't have to decide right this second. I just, I just thought I would throw that out there. So we can, we can add to the screening committee. We can replace me if anybody wants to do that. Um, but we can have up to two select board members on the screening committee, because if it is three, then it becomes a, a quorum of the select board, which is a different animal entirely. So we don't have to decide that right now. Right. Yeah, I was thinking of just two total. Sure. And that, I have a question too on on the way. One of the things that I felt we have five people in an hour when it came to us. I'd like to be able to spend more time with with some of these candidates that um, that allow us to really get to know them a little bit better. I think that was uh, something I would have liked to have been able to do. So now that we have a do over. We could put something like that together, whether they come for a day or they come, you know, that's the way you really get to learn who it is that you're talking yeah, to. We might be able to, to talk to MRI between now and then and see um, any other structures that they've used for sort of the interview process. Um, I think most of the time it's done the way that we were doing it. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be done exactly that way. Thanks. Um, all right. Any other? So is everyone okay with me contact at least contacting the members of the screening committee and seeing if they want to continue? Definitely. Yes. Okay, great. Um, and again, if we want to add another one of our own or, or anything like that, we can do so anytime between now and then. We don't have to do that right now. Um, I don't think there's anything else on the town administrator search update. Okay. Um, is there any other business before we go into executive session this evening? Julianne. Yeah, uh, so we have been talking for many weeks about having a, you know, an in-person meeting where we hash out goals and things like that. And um, we, I, with, with the summer getting, you know, people's vacations and everything, it's going to be, it's going to be tricky to schedule something and I think we should get going on that as soon as we can so I mean I'd like to get you know what my fellow selectmen select board people think about that and then figure out a way to um, establish a date I, I think we can meet before we meet with Mr. Nutting or you know because because he's available now too so how do you how are we going to work that bob any suggestions on that well i think it depends to the extent you want the um new town administrator involved i know that uh now it's become a little longer than expected but um 
I believe it was discussed that there was some merit to having the um, the town administrator involved, and whether you want to still have that as a as a um, as a goal. I mean, I did tell Jeff when I spoke with him and and said that uh, the selectman had approved um, you know the ARPA funds and using him that it would be a few months off, and he's fine with that. That if if it was in the fall. Well, I think I. He, I mean, it did make perfect sense to have the, the new town administrator there, but now, uh, you know, I mean, we could hire someone who can't leave for three months. And and I just feel like we we need to really talk about goals because otherwise we're, you know, we'll get more accomplished, I think, if we identify some goals that we want to get done in the next 12 months. And with or without the, the new town administrator, I think we should do it as soon as possible. Lisa. Yes. Um, I totally agree with Julianne. I think that uh, our first meeting, we can make a list of our goals. Uh, the second meeting, we could probably have Mr. Nodding and have him give us the vehicles or the paths to attain those goals. And then a third time with the new town administrator, once we have refined some of that. And I think that having the goals discussed prior to offering a contract would be a good idea because that there's an incorporation I've seen in, in a, several different contracts where those goals are discussed prior to so that there's a better understanding of what that job is going to entail and what we're looking for. Um, I think we've, I think this is a good learning experience that shows us the, you know, the more depth that we really have to get into. And, um, and I think that uh, meeting sooner than later, you know, if we can find out even tonight what, what's available for anybody, and then we can, we can set that up. And then, like I said, we'd make three meetings, we'd have a second meeting with uh, Mr. Nutting that would already help us to say, okay, well, that's what you're looking to do. This is how you would do it not how can I help you think of what you want to do. So um, that's my two cents on that. Yeah, I mean, we can we can meet at any time. Um, it may make sense to wait until the end of August, beginning of September, just due to some traveling that folks are doing. But I because I agree that is a meeting that should be in person. Um, and for folks at home, that, of course, would be a public meeting still. Um, do we have any, do, I mean, I'm available for the most part. Um, Laura, do you have any available time in August? Um, were you thinking of like, a, what day of the week are you guys thinking? Or does anybody have any thoughts? I'm, I'm open. So I don't know what the rest of you have for, for plans. Nana Camp is a session this time. Uh, I mean, we could do, so we have, we have a meeting, sort of our regular August meeting is the 14th. We could do the evening of the 21st, which in a normal month would be a regular meeting. It would be, you know, first and, no, that wouldn't be. It would be uh, 7th and 14th and 28th. So 28th would be the regular meeting. Either 21st or 28th is a possibility. I, I prefer the 21st. I can do the 21st. You can do the 21st. Okay. I could do the 28th. I'm you, sorry. Okay. Maybe we can take this offline and figure this out. But I think I think I'm hearing consensus that we can try to set up a meeting in the near future um, in advance of some time with Mr. Nutting to sort of preliminarily go through and develop a potential list of goals um, so that we would have a starting point when we met with him. I would love that as well, just to kind of get the feeling for what everybody, the direction that everything else is going in, and then it can help just give me some time to to think about that and how I can complement it and how that'll benefit, you know, the, the work that we're doing. Okay. I'm sorry that I didn't have more dates, you know, readily available, no, it's but fine. I'm glad yeah, I'm August is tough with people. That's all right. We'll we'll figure it out. And it doesn't have to be a Monday evening. We could, you know, we could even do it you know, Saturday afternoon or anything like that, if we wanted to. Um, I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't expect Bob and Becca to join us if we did it at such an odd time. <laughs> um, okay, but we'll we'll work on that offline about just coordinating a date. And again, for folks at home, um, of course, it's public discussion. That would be a publicly posted meeting, et cetera. 
Um, okay, anything else that anyone wants to talk about before we go into executive session? In which case I will entertain a motion. I'm ready. I move we enter executive session pursuant to MGL chapter 30A, section 21, section subsection six, to discuss the land and building at 13 Church Street. Due to the chair's determination that a discussion regarding this matter in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the position of the board and the board will not return to open section. Second. Motion made by Laura, seconded by Julianne. Any discussion? All those in favor, Laura? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Julianne? Aye. Kristen? Aye. I also vote aye. Vote is unanimous in favor. We are adjourning the public session at 8.05 p.m. And I will see the rest of the board in executive session. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank and you. we will not return. We will not be returning to public session, correct? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you.